On the 5th of January 1978, a group of men from the central Kingston community of Southside were transported to the Green Bay shooting range in St. Catherine. Five of them were shot dead by Jamaica Defense Force soldiers. The incident soon became known as the Green Bay killings and stoked intense public outcry, much like the Tivoli operations of 2010, the Crawl killings of 2003, and the Brayton shootings of 2001. Storm Salter directed the Jamaican film Better Must Come, which depicts the violent political upheaval of the 1970s. There was no doubt he would consider the Green Bay killings. My film was really about the 70s, and um, when I was writing it, I basically was just read about the entire era and um, a lot of the things that took place. And one of the most poignant things and one of the most shocking things to me was when I read about Green Bay. So I, I see Green Bay more as um, and the scene that I would say might be inspired by Green Bay. We don't say it's Green Bay. We don't. We know it's it's just a thing that happens. Um, to me, that represented more like a full stop on a certain type of story, um, a certain type of equation where government and community people and getting votes and kind of gang, act, you know, the political gangsterism and the end point of that being a Green Bay. Better Must Come is, is pretty fictional in terms of, I, I took creative license obviously to create an original story, a fictional story that closely mirrored reality. Yeah, push it up and pull it out, yeah. Are the tools them that? Ammunition. Where the tools them there? The firing range. Range? So what kind of range you matter? I'm not, I'm not a surprise Ricky, thing, you Ricky, know. Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. You know, we test the things them. We can't do that up here, sir. When you read about it, they said that you know they showed them some boxes of ammunition, and then they were told, oh, they have to bring them on here, and then they were gonna get the guns over there, and how they set the trap. Um, so I just took pretty light. I, I took the information and just recreated, and so how I kind of thought it would happen from what I read, and you know there were targets. It's supposed to be a shooting range, you know. So all these elements were there, and it was in the area as well. It was literally in the same area as Green Bay that we did it. We couldn't go onto the property, but we did, went as close to it as possible, and there's similar land structure going down. So the landscape was the same. But what I thought was most shocking was the sheer deceit of it all. You know, the sheer the sheer trickery of the whole situation. Um, what I understand it to be. Because I said this as well, I wasn't born that time yet. So this is all something I'm reading about. But from what I've read, um, yeah, it was a lot of deceit, it was a lot of trickery, it was a lot of telling, you know, you're uh, uh, in a position of power, but you're telling lies to get some guys to a place to take them out. And what was probably more shocking was stories of after the actual event at Green Bay, some of the guys who had gotten away having to hide out in their communities because they were still being hunted by um, security forces to silence them. That I thought was really shocking. Because that is some um, straight, I don't even know how to describe that. That is like terror. Uh, that was an initial shock for me as well in terms of not learning about an incident like Green Bay in high school. When I can recall all kind of old war with English, this and that, I can remember. And I was taught all of those wars. Maybe I heard about a maroon war or two because it's hundreds of years old. But no talk about those events. Things are happening in, in waves, and I think what happened in Tivoli, as I say, come from the same symptoms of, of, of that era, and it's another s scandalous, massive loss of life, rough situation that rough things happen to the country that I believe has traumatized us as a country again. But I think there's a certain amount of being used to this type of trauma, and I think that in society being used to type of trauma, therefore knowing how to get past it or block it out or, you know, push it back under the rug. Um, it's something that we might be getting used to as a people because this type of thing happens a lot. I believe Better Must Come uh, achieved putting the whole gangster kind of identity um, into context 
in that it showed its connection to politics and that the initial kind of hardening of street gangs was done as an extension of political parties and political influence. Because um, it's very relevant, <laughs> you know, when the structure that runs your country is also in a very direct way responsible for an element of society that everybody would rather would rather have a society that doesn't have this kind of level of violence. F politicians don't care about the, inart the articulate minority. It's when the majority get articulate, that time they're going to start worrying. Because then they're not going to just be a minority on Twitter calling for resignations. Where the tools them there? You, come with me. For what? The guns. The rest of you can stay here and get the ammo out. All right? Hold this thing. Hey, Bridget, where you go? The guns, them. Wanna come, the man?